Hey, what's going on everybody? Paul Tech here. So today we're going to be testing out the new Geekbench 4. So if you've downloaded the Geekbench 3 in the past, uh, you're going to notice that it's changed now to Geekbench 4. So it's updated. And even if you go into the uh, Google Play Store, show you right here. If you go into the Google Play Store and say you type in Geekbench 3, it's going to take you to Geekbench 4 now. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this and test it out and uh, see how it's changed here. So I'm going to install it onto this device as well. We're going to run the uh, test and see what numbers we do get. Um, I've been doing a little research on this Geekbench 4. Some people are saying they're getting uh, lower scores than before using the Geekbench 3. And so we're going to test it out and see what scores we get using this uh, Geekbench 4 now. One thing I did notice, if you have a device, for instance, like this one here, the Sharp Aquos Crystal, which is running Android 4.4.2, and you try to go to the Play Store, and you try to download Geekbench 4, unfortunate thing now is this device isn't compatible with this version. So the Geekbench 3, I was able to run this test on the Sharp Aquos Crystal, um, even though it's on KitKat. But now, since it's updated Geekbench 4, I can't run the Geekbench test on this. So it's kind of unfortunate because I do like to um, do comparisons between two phones and run the test and just kind of compare the numbers I do get. So if you're running a, a Android 4.4.2, it's not going to support Geekbench 4. Or Geekbench 4 is not going to support your device. So just keep that in mind. That's one of the uh, new things with this upgrade to Geekbench 4 here. Let me show you how it looks. It's definitely changed a little bit, the appearance of it. Unlock this device real quick. Let's open it. Accept. So it looks different now. The layout is different. It's changed. Um, you get CPU, which is gonna show you your device model, OS, CPU, CPU speed, and memory. Um, CPU benchmark here. And let's click up on top how that looks so you got benchmark history and device um, you got settings option here which doesn't really give you a whole lot in settings there so you do have that another thing I did notice with this Geekbench 4 now there is no battery test option just the run CPU benchmark so there is no battery test option so just keep that in mind so we are gonna run this test and see what we get I'm gonna run this also on the Nexus 6 right here. So I got the Nexus 6, and let me go ahead and show you real quick. Let's go to about phone. So this is running uh, Android 7.0 uh, Nougat here, as you can see. So it is running that. This is the beta version though. Okay, so I'll show you real quick where it says that. So this is uh, on the beta program right now. So just keep that in mind, but we're still gonna run it and see what type of scores we do get um, with all three of these devices here. Again, the battery saver mode is not on. If it was on, it would be this red bar up on top. I will just clear out all recent apps. Clear all those out. Bench four. Let's go ahead and just accept the terms of use. All right, same thing with the LG G2 here. Clear everything out. I look back. All the uh, running apps are going to be cleared out. Geekbench 4. Okay, so that's ready to go. And again with the ZTE Z Max Pro here. Okay. I'll clear all the recent apps out. Bench 4. Alright, so let's see here. Uh, it doesn't really matter if I run these all at the same time or anything. Um, I'm just going to run the test and see the numbers we do get. So those are running as well as this one here too. So again, battery saver mode has been disabled. Um, with the ZMAX Pro, if the battery saver mode is on, you do get that red bar on the top and the bottom of the uh, display there. Um, so like I said, I was doing some research. Um, and some people on, on YouTube were saying that 
their scores have been lower than when it was ran on the Geekbench 3. So the Geekbench 4 now, uh, for some reason, is dropping their scores down. So I've run tests previously on Geekbench 3 on Nexus 6, G2, and the ZTEZ Max Pro. So I know the numbers that I did have when I ran this test with all three of these devices. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure, or go ahead and check and see if there is any um, big, huge difference in the numbers there. And you know what? It does look like this test is taking longer too than uh, before. Before, um, it didn't seem like it was taking this long for it to run the test and get you the numbers. But it is definitely um, taking a good amount of time now. It's barely on 25%. 25%, we got 31% right here. All right, so I have the numbers here, as you can see there. So, still waiting, still waiting. Man, this test is definitely taking uh, longer than the previous version on the Geekbench 3. So those were the numbers that I did get when I ran it on the Geekbench 3, on this test here. So, I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna uh, fast forward through this test here and then we'll get the numbers right before it hits 100%. Okay, so the test is still running on three of these devices here. It looks like the Nexus 6 is just about ready and complete here. So let's see what we got. All right, so single core score 1,011, multi-core score uh, 2,850. Again, this operating system is Android 7.0. Uh, this is the beta version though, but there you go. So this test does show you the um, system information, single core information there on this new uh, updated Geekbench 4. We have multi-core score, gives you all that. And again, single core score, your device, other devices that you can compare it to. Square higher than all those. There we have it. That's basically the way um, this test is going to perform now. It's definitely taking uh, a lot longer than before when you ran this on the Geekbench 3. I noticed it takes several minutes now. So here's the score on the LG G2. So I want to see if it's any different from the previous test that I did do. Because I heard some people saying it's scoring it lower. And okay, so originally 911 single core score, 1003 now, multi core score 2248. Um, so it does appear that it did go up on the single core score and then it actually went down on the multi core score, as you can see there. So 2248, multi core score 2691. So yeah. Um, did go up there and the numbers did go down a little bit on the multi-core score so um, still curious to see what numbers we do get on the ZT Easy Max Pro there run this test you're gonna see if you've ran tests on Geekbench 3 in the past you're just you're gonna see how um, slow this takes now to get these numbers okay so finally at 100% here 100% we're gonna get the results right now so let's take a look Again, I have the numbers from the test I did do on this video here. So single core score is now 682, single core score is 733, multi-core score is 2,195, and then multi-core score is now 3,048. So yeah, numbers did go down. In videos on YouTube, I did read some comments of people saying uh, the Geekbench 4 uh, is for some reason, the uh, numbers are a little less than when I, they ran this on the uh, Geekbench 3. So, uh, but there you have it. Those are the numbers. This is the new Geekbench 4. I just thought I would uh, kind of run this test and just see if there was any huge change in the numbers there. As you can see, not a big huge change on the uh, G2 there, but as you can see, the numbers um, are, uh, you know, changed for the ZMAX Pro here, the numbers did go down, so kind of interesting. So we don't have Geekbench 3 anymore. A device like this, the Sharp Aquos Crystal, is no longer gonna be supported um, for the Geekbench 
um, four now. So just keep that in mind. So, all right, everybody. So if you enjoyed this uh, video on the Geekbench 4, the new updated version here, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I really do appreciate it. And uh, once again, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'll talk to you on the next one.